The 911 call comes in at 1.37 a.m. A shot had been fired on a crowded dance floor in the Palladium nightclub. The man who hits the floor with a single bullet in the back of the head is Bindi Johal. Meet Bindi Johal, a seemingly casual young man, just like many other residents of Vancouver. However, beneath this ordinary facade lies one of Canada's most infamous gangsters. Unlike a secret double life, Bindi's criminal career was a highly publicized affair, culminating in a tragic night of violence and bloodshed on a nightclub dance floor. Today, the name Bindi Johol reverberates as a legend in the underworld. However, in the 1990s, his reign instilled unparalleled fear and terror on the streets. Prepare yourself for an astonishing and shocking account of this notorious South Asian gangster who held an iron grip over the Canadian streets in the 90s. As 300 people gathered in the vibrant nightlife of Vancouver, their laughter and chatter filled the air, masking the impending doom that lurked in the shadows. Among them was 27-year-old Bindi Johol, a man known for all the wrong reasons infamous as one of Canada's most notorious gangsters. Despite the dark reputation that followed him, Johol seemed carefree that night. In a sudden and chilling moment, a masked gunman came and with ruthless precision, the assailant took aim and fired a single shot that pierced the night with a deafening sound. Johol, unsuspecting and defenseless, was hit from behind and collapsed onto the dance floor. Confusion and panic gripped the club, creating a chaotic scene as people scrambled for safety. Despite the swift response of medical personnel, Johal's injuries proved too severe, and after a valiant struggle, he succumbed to his wounds four agonizing hours later. The nightclub that had once been a symbol of revelry and joy was now tainted with the memory of his demise. When his parents made the life-changing decision to move to Vancouver, British Columbia in 1975, Johol's life took a significant turn. Johol displayed a consistent lack of respect for authority figures from an early age, displaying a rebellious streak and a tendency to challenge authority figures. As he grew older, his behavior worsened, earning him the reputation of a problem child. Even his teachers expressed concern over his actions and noted a striking lack of remorse. At a mere 18 years old, Johal's life took a darker turn when he was sentenced to 60 days in prison for a vicious assault on his school's vice principal. The attack was so severe that it left the victim in a prolonged recovery period. Consequently, Johal was promptly expelled from school. Johal joined McNair Secondary School in Richmond, where his troubles persisted and his path toward a criminal career began. Shortly after enrolling, he was convicted of possessing a deadly weapon when he smashed a car window with a baseball bat. He abandoned college after just one semester to pursue a career in crime, joining a local gang known as the Los Diablos, which later transformed into the Punjabi Mafia. With an increasing number of Indo-Canadian members, Johal became a hitman in this criminal empire, working for Jimmy and Ron Assange. By 1991, Johal saw an opportunity to escalate his criminal activities after Jimmy Assange was charged with the murder of a local narcotics trafficker. This led him to take the Punjabi Mafia in a new direction, hijacking electronics trucks to sell their valuable cargo on the black market. His criminal exploits were estimated to bring in around four million annually. However, his biggest downfall proved to be his volatile temper and lack of regard for anyone, even his own gang members. Described by a police officer as extremely self-centered, narcissistic, and harboring a general hatred of people. Johal had close ties with Bal Batar, one of his associates, whom he met in prison during his 20s. They weren't friends, but rather business partners, as Johal maintained a transactional approach with everyone in his group. Batar, a lieutenant of Johal, boasted about the Punjabi Mafia's involvement in over a dozen murders across the nation, and openly admitted to carrying out several executions alongside his boss. While some of Johal's assassination attempts failed, such as targeting his associate and former brother-in-law, 
pre-Sarbit Peter Gill. He did not stop there. His next shocking target was a member of his own family, his cousin, Robbie Candola, whom Joe Hall sought deadly revenge against for his alleged involvement in the death of Joe Hall's younger brother. The depths of Joe Hall's ruthlessness and disregard for human life became evident through these twisted acts of violence. Joe Hall led a death squad named the Elite, comprised entirely of Indo-Canadian hitmen, boasting about their gruesome acts that claimed over 25 lives in just five years. The turning point came when Joe Hall fell out of favor with his former bosses, the Desange brothers. Seeking revenge, he orchestrated a calculated hit on Jimmy Desange, fueling a public war of words and demonstrating his audacity by appearing on live television to taunt his rivals. I mean, I guess he was a very serious person. From what I've seen of him on the street, I personally think he couldn't have hit his way out of a paper bag. Bindi, I'm here and I'm bad mouth you, buddy, okay? If you want to talk about nobody, if, if anybody's a nobody buddy, Maybe that's why your life is worth a loony on the streets today. I wouldn't shoot you in the back, but it'd do it right face to face, square in the forehead. His life of crime escalated further as he targeted associates, rivals, and even his own cousin in a quest for deadly revenge. Despite facing multiple criminal charges, Johal managed to walk free from court due to a shocking twist of fate during the trial. He didn't show any signs of slowing down, even kidnapping notorious Chinese triad gangster Randy Chan for ransom. However, Joe Hall's journey ended in a hail of bullets on December 20th, 1998. At the Palladium nightclub, marking the fall of Vancouver's first celebrity gangster. Despite attempts to romanticize his story through documents and movies, Joe Hall's life was one of chaos and destruction. His disregard for human life and relentless pursuit of power led to a legacy of fear and violence, making him a folk hero among some and a terror among others. The chilling tale of Bindi Johal serves as a cautionary reminder of how a bright future can be derailed by a path of darkness and crime. Bindi Johal's life was a roller coaster of violence, betrayal, and cold blooded murder. Although he was hailed as a folk hero by some, glorifying his criminal lifestyle through documentaries and movies, the truth remains that his disregard for others ultimately led to his downfall. Bindi Johal's legacy serves as a reminder of the dangers of the criminal world and the tragic consequences it can bring. Bindi Johal's legacy serves as a reminder of the dangers of the criminal world and the tragic consequences it can bring. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into the chilling case of Bindi Johal. If you found this video intriguing and are hungry for more spine-tingling stories, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. I'm eager to hear your suggestions in the comments for the next true crime story we should uncover together. Stay tuned as we continue our journey through the enigmatic realm of criminal mysteries.